we have looked at a lot of topics relating to vocational training. As vocational training in Germany often starts at around the age of 16, many young people are already employees. Even before that, young people help out and do part-time jobs. If we have now regulated everything in Germany, then surely children and young people are also working. Let's take a look today at the laws that deal with the working lives of young people. On March 9, 1839, the Regulativ über die Beschäftigung jugendlicher Arbeiter in Fabriken, Regulation on the Employment of Young Workers in Factories, came into force in Prussia. The background to this was the health and education of young people. Children who deployed health problems as a result of working too hard also had these problems as adults and were then not productive and could not be used as soldiers. And in a society in which reading became increasingly important, all citizens should be able to read, write and do basic arithmetic. For example, employment was only permitted between 5 o'clock in the morning and 9 o'clock in the evening, but not on Sundays or public holidays, not for more than 10 hours a day and not during classes in catechumen or confirmation classes. Children under the age of nine are also no longer allowed to be employed in these factories. It sounds frightening today that this was probably the case back then. The amendment to the Reichsgewerbeordnung, Reich Trade Regulations of June 1, 1891, in the German Empire stipulated, among other things, that employment before the age of 13 was prohibited and that 14-year-olds were not allowed to work more than six hours or adolescents before 5.30 and after 8.30. In the Law on Child Labor and the Work Hours of Young People of April 30, 1938, the regulations were tightened further although agriculture and forestry were still exempt. All previous regulations applied to factories and mines. However, with the start of the Second World War in September 1939, the regulations were suspended again. After the war, however, they continued to apply until 1960. The Jugendarbeitsschutzgesetz, Youth Employment Protection Act of the Federal Republic of Germany, was then enacted and later reformed in 1976, 1984 and 1997, where the regulations were initially very strict with regard to night work and even separate break rooms for minors. These regulations were relaxed again. It was difficult for a small craft business to afford two break rooms for minors and adults and in business with regular shift work, young people were also allowed to work until 11 p.m. The last reform in 1997 was then made to comply with the corresponding EU directive. In 2005 there were a few more deregulations. For example, young people were now allowed to start work at 5 o'clock if the day were expected to be very hot or they were allowed to work until 11 in the evening for music or theater performances work. In 2011, professional soccer became a topic of discussion when an underage Schalke professional scored the winning goal against Nuremberg at around 11 p.m. and Schalke 04 reached the next round of the DFB Cup. Schalke said that professional soccer, like a theater performance was an exemption. <laughs> well, in the case of some swallow artists, you could talk about theater, but without a specific permit, work after eight o'clock in the evening is not allowed, but it is on Sundays and public holidays. But what does the law actually say? In Germany, the law applies to anyone under the age of 18 who is employed or in training outside their own family household. Tidying a room or sweeping the stairs is therefore not covered. A child is defined as someone who is not yet 15 years old. An adolescent is someone who is at least 15 but not yet 18 years old. A distinction is also made as to who is no longer subject to full-time compulsory education. 
full-time compulsory schooling is nine to ten years depending on the federal state um, from elementary school to the end of secondary school. A distinction is made between tägliche Arbeitszeit, daily working time, which excludes break, and Schichtzeit, shift time, which includes break. If you work from 8 in the morning to 5 in the evening with one hour break, you would have 8 hours working time but 9 hours shift time. In principle, the employment of children is prohibited unless it is an internship, therapy or a court order. However, children aged 13 and over can be employed for light work with the consent of their parents or legal guardians if this does not endanger the children or school lessons up to a maximum of two hours a day or up to three hours a day on a family farm and not after 6 p.m. or before 8 a.m. or before school. Young people are allowed to work up to four weeks during the vacation. But how long are they allowed to work, for example, during an apprenticeship? Young people are allowed to work a maximum of 8 hours a day and 40 hours a week. If you have a short Friday, for example, the time on the other working days can be extended to up to 8.5 hours. In agriculture, young people are allowed to work up to 9 hours a day and up to 85 hours in a double week during harvest time. Again, agriculture is something special here. The young person must be released from work to attend vocational school and if, in certain constellations, a young person still has to come into the company after vocational school, the teaching time, including breaks, will be counted towards the remaining working hours. Of course, the time spent at vocational school is also paid. The same applies if there are external training courses or examinations. Rest breaks are also fixed. As with adults, the worthwhile break must be at least 15 minutes long. Young people must take a break of at least 30 minutes if they work more than four and a half hours and up to six hours and at least 60 minutes if they work more than six hours. The shift time may not exceed 10 hours, 6 hours in underground mining and 11 hours in the hospitality industry, agriculture, animal husbandry and on construction assembly sites. The daily rest period from the end of work on one day to the start of work on the next day must be at least 12 hours. In principle, young people may only work between 6 in the morning and 8 in the evening. In the catering and show business, they may work until 10 o'clock in the evening and, as mentioned at the beginning, until 11 o'clock in multi-shift organizations. In bakeries and pastry shops, they are allowed to start as early as 5 o'clock in the morning, if they are 17 years old, even as early as 4 o'clock in the morning. And they are also allowed to work in agriculture between 5 o'clock in the morning and 9 o'clock in the evening. Then there are a few strictly regulated exceptions, such as the theater performances mentioned at the beginning. In principle, young people may not be employed on Saturdays, except in typical business such as hospitals, old people's and children's homes, bakeries, agriculture, restaurants and the like. However, at least two Saturdays per month should remain free. The two days off per week should also be consecutive. Hairdressers, for example, are traditionally open on Saturday but closed on Sundays and Mondays. Young people are also not allowed to be employed on Sundays, with possible exceptions, in the health service, necessary activities in agriculture or in sport, which would allow young professional footballers to play matches on Sunday, but not at night. Young people are also not to be employed on public holidays. The vacation entitlement of young people is also higher than the normal statutory vacation entitlement. Young people are entitled to 30 days up to the age of 16, 27 up to the age of 17 and 25 up to the age of 18. The vacation should of course be taken during the vocational school vacancies.
Then there are a few special provisions for inland shipping or emergencies. In addition, some regulations can be deviated from in collective agreements. The second part of the law prohibits dangerous work, which also affects the psyche or would expose the young persons to moral danger. Peace work is also prohibited. Only young people aged 16 and over may be employed underground. And only people who do not have a criminal record may employ young people. Part 3 then lists special obligations for the employer in addition to a safe working environment. This includes a ban on giving young people alcohol or tobacco or chastising them. The fourth part addresses necessary medical examinations. For example, every young person must be examined before starting work and if they change employers. This is also to ensure that the young person is physically fit enough to the planned work. Typical rules for the area of application and infringement follow. Penalties range from fines up to 5,000 euro or 180 daily rates or six months imprisonment, depending on the regulation. In a company, the young person is then a normal employee and is represented by the works council, if there is one. If the company with a works council has at least five employees who are undergoing training or are under the age of 18, a youth and trainee representative must be elected. This body specifically represents the interests of the young people and trainees. Of course, the parents also sign the employment contract when it's concluded. The employer must apply slightly different standards to the relationship with the young employee. If the young person is an apprentice, then the educational aspect is also part of the training. In the event of misconduct, the employer must then place more emphasis on the educational part and cannot dismiss the young person quite as quickly as a normal employee. On the other hand, the employer naturally has the opportunity to train the trainee in such a way that he has a good employee afterwards. A special feature for minors is that no minimum wage applies here. For apprenticeship, of course, at least the minimum rate for apprenticeship applies. Currently 649 euro per month in the first year of apprenticeship, 766 in the second year and 876 in the third year. If there is even a fourth year of apprenticeship, the minimum monthly payment is set by law at 909 euro. Here too, this can only be undercut by applicable collective agreements. Sometimes it is advantageous to conclude a collective agreement with the trade unions. I hope I was able to give prospective trainees or prospective employers who want to hire minors a brief overview of the Youth Employment Protection Act in Germany. There is a link to the law in the description where you can read everything again in detail. The various chambers for employers will help you to comply with the law, as will the Employers Liability Insurance Association, the employment agency or the trade unions. Otherwise, please ask an expert lawyer. Thank you for your attention and we'll see you next Saturday.